we are here at Sido Jodan and Sido Juliana's home. And today I will like to take this opportunity to, to start with this new series asking to Sido Juliana to clarify some, uh, some things, some concepts about uh, some strategies that I have doubt about. Then, uh, these strategies are very similar in the pronunciation that they are uh, Hitori i Hitaro. Uh, please, Onesimas, Shidoshiana, could you explain me and all our viewers uh, what's the difference between this Hitori and this Hitaro? Please. Yes, uh, actually, it's uh, very simple when we understand what they both mean. So, uh, Hitori is from a uh, fire bird. It goes. Uh, like a reference to small blades that you can hide under some objects, especially in close uh, indoor situations, uh, like a room or within a house or something, when you are aware that somebody there is actually an assassin or represents a great danger and is passing like a normal person or acting like somebody else could act and you expect him to attack surprisingly some moment so what you do is actually you use that advantage to get close to him and attack him also using that surprise strategy but with small blades so those small blades could be any small blade they are all uh, linked to the term of fire bird so here i have uh, for instance i have your shokunai that is a very thin and, and a small blade easy, very easy to, to hide. So that's Hitori. So let's uh, put some example for us to understand. Uh, imagine that you are inside the house and I'm going to serve you tea. And yes. I'm aware already that you are a dangerous person and you're going to betray or you're going to attack or kill me in any case you can. So I will act calmly, like pretending that I don't know nothing. But I'm going to hide this blade, for instance, under a tray. So if I put it here, you probably won't see the object. It's as it's so thin, the volume is not something that will catch your attention. And I put here uh, the tea, and I go calmly and and quietly near to you and ask you uh, if you want some tea, for instance. That in Japanese will go like "ochai um, kata desu ka." And when you accept, because that's the normal protocol, I catch the blade, so I have the blade here, and I'm going to attack you. I mean, it could be uh, neck, eyes, ears, I mean, any other uh, possibility that I can have as, as a vulnerable target for, for me to surprise you. And after this first attack, of course, I will continue my attack to neutralize that aggression. Okay. Yeah, then it's the that usage is the usage of the small blades uh, as uh, will be also for piercing and stabbing in several... But yes, because once you use the blade, if you don't go for a primary target, it will be a lethal target uh, on first hand, that, uh, then you need to continue your attack till you achieve actually a primary target. If you go for secondary targets like hands or something, you're going to react. Okay, so it will depend. But uh, the main thing here is that, that the strategy way of, of thinking on hiding small di uh, discrete blades in a normal daily casual situation for you to neutralize a, a killer or assassin in, in that case. So it's clear. And Hitaro, please. You and hear. Hitaro. Now, let's go to Hitaro. When we talk about that word, it's like a verb, so it is like to be floated or to be submerged. So I understand that for us to memorize that strategy, it's like if you were submerged already in a dangerous situation. And again, we are talking about indoors or small place. Um, Environment. Yes, so that's the, the problem. <laughs> of course, you can use the, the also any other secondary weapon. In mm -hmm. this case, I can demonstrate something using the, the shokunai itself because it's already here. But uh, the thing is that 
I have to neutralize your attack. Now I am aware that you are going to attack me. And I have to um, apply some very precise movements, very short movements, very efficient movements. I have to save energy because I cannot run away or I cannot uh, have uh, the environment as a advantage to me. Actually, I'm in the opposite. I am emerged, submerged in a very complicated, dangerous situation in a small place. So it's like probably because it's called floated. Okay? So yeah. in this case, I know that you're going to attack me. Actually, we have here the, the sword for us to see some techniques. So I'm going to stand up for us to analyze it together. As we said before, I have here in a in a in attack position one of the, the positions. So, of course, it is a small blade. I need to be really careful for my hand not to go to the sharp area. So I have it here. I'm going to contract my fingers and my thumbs going to support the blade. So my hand want to go uh, further from from that safe area, and. I'm going to consider here that really small space as a small room where the attack would occur. So, uh, for instance, uh, I do it slowly for the camera to catch, but if he attacks me like a Marco, see here, I have no place to go. The sword is a uh, medium weapon, a large weapon, not as large as it, it is the Naginata or the bow, but anyway, he's going to cheat me. So I go to the side, I let him think that he will actually going to cut me, so I go to this parallel line and my hand goes, my, see my right hand goes under his hand while doing this I catch the tsuba, so you see my right hand is already here and the shokunai goes to step in the do area Okay, so you could go to visceral area, although it's not a primary target. It goes up, then you get here the, the hard line, or even up, then we have three variations already on the mandibular, under the mandibular area. So once it's here, I'm going to catch the sword. I have to turn it. You see my left forearm will work as a support as we'll do the left hand and I will turn the sword against him slowly because we don't have too much space here just for you to understand and from here I could just fast cutting I could step in a direct line I could go under change my left hand here and step Again, it could be nodo, it will be throat, neck, also, or even under the mandibular area, just like a, a sasai tsuki. Another example from you those also, possibilities in this, and variations. In this case, employ your other forearm in order to support the mini. Yes, exactly. That's what we are going to see now. So, for instance, if you cut again, and now my hand goes over it. And the shokunai goes to the neck, again, or eyes, that's a very, very good target. And from it, okay, we can pass, take his hand, my left could go to the blade, like a sote. That will be the role that my left hand will do, but I have the weapon here, so I cannot do it. I will use the forearm. And I can go here for some very good target, as is the groin area. I could come back and step. I could really go close to him, pass my forearm in the other direction, go to his neck. So, of course, we're dealing here with a situation where the, sh the, the shokunai, the blade itself, caused the first uh, great injury uh, on our main primary target. Okay? So, as you see, it's a very short space, so he has nowhere to go. And that, possible, that makes it possible for me to come quickly and really achieve him. Because he won't be running away or 
And if he falls, I continue with the attack. So for an instance, if I ignore here the Shokunai, and I change, I can also go, you see here the blade is uh, close to my hand, it adapts itself to the Tsuka. And I can use my left hand also with the right hand to any normal cut that I could apply. So if he stabs me or if he does any other kind of attack, although in a small place you understand that you probably need to draw it up or lateral considering the space itself. So again, I could come, you see my right hand goes in the middle, the left hand attacks groin. Again, we have a lot of targets. Even here, if I want to take his hand, I could use the weapon itself. I could strike here, stab, goes under it. Again, pass the sword up, twist it, adapt to my left hand, change and do the final cut. So we have a lot of situations that we can apply both of them, especially considering the small space we have to, the main thing here is to neutralize the, the katana. So the right hand goes, you, have, as you see that structure, he holds the sword like this. So if he's holding with both hands, when one comes up, you see, for him to try to go, to come, it's difficult. Okay, so my, my, my forearm is blocking that movement, okay? So if I don't go up and directly hold the tsuka, just by passing it and doing it, I change the ha direction. So it will be more difficult for him to, to cut me. The same thing goes, uh, for instance, if he draws only with one hand. So the thing is that we won't have that leverage anymore because he's just using one hand as normal in some kind of uh, nuki where you're going to cut directly. So if he cuts normally, nuki. like this, you see the hand must come to block that arm. So that I don't have leverage anymore, but again, please, if I block it, the other hand is already working and injuring with velocity for me to catch the blade. So the thing is, I need to gain time to control the sword. That is the main main danger weapon here. Yeah. Okay. It's so that is Hitaro. Very much. Uh, yeah. Do you have any other question or possibility that maybe you want to ask? For me, it's uh, quite clear, and I think that all viewers will be also pleased because it's easy to understand your explanation. Thank so you. I understand here that because I'm using the left hand with the shokunai, I'm holding it like this. But of course, you have other possibility to use the weapon that is like that, normal. But the thing is to do that with the left hand probably will be more difficult for me as my right hand will be working in other uh, movements and other direction. Okay, so that's why we show that uh, strategy like with this position of the shokunai. But considering that is a strategy, you may find a lot of possibilities for you to understand and for you to study actually how to use or how to get out of this dangerous situation. Well, I think that I have one more question because I, uh, I am a little confused because I believe uh, the, that uh, in principle Hitaro it's uh, with, uh, with, with empty weapons, with, with empty hands. Could you explain more about that? Yes, sure. Uh, although you can adapt to anything that you may have, the strategy itself on its origins is for empty hands. So basically we have the same movements but without any other blade. So we consider the same conditions. We are in a small place, in a close uh, or indoor situation. I have nowhere to go. So you attack me. So you have the same principle. So once, if I'm here with empty hands, I go inside. I press, see, my arms come up under the sword. The blade comes up and I you or continue. Yeah. The same thing goes if um, 
any other situation. Yes, if I go with my hands over it or go again, you can go do the same thing. Then I have here a lock or a unit lock on the elbow, that's right. And I have already my forearm on the blade. A nice style. So basically it will be the same thing, but I won't go for uh, primary targets. Only if I use impact. Yeah, and you will go more to hands. locks or to something yes, that I will need to neutralize the, the weapon neutralize in way. My, my capability to, to draw the sword and, and attack you. And uh, with this uh, clarifying, it's very clear. Thank you very much to everybody and keep watching our channel. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you very much.